Today, we are going through a live audit of a Facebook account. This is an account that spends $10,000 over the last 30 days, so it's on the medium to small side, and I think this is great for everyone to really understand that some strategies just get way too complex. I literally just opened this account for the very first time two to three minutes ago. I took a brief look in here, and I had to record this video because I absolutely think this is a knock out of the park for everything that I'm about to walk through. So as you're watching this, if you see red flags here that you also have in your account, note them down and make changes. And then I'm gonna walk through the exact setup that I would do if I was taking over this account today. Let's hop right in. First things first, I love that they are using bid caps. However, I could tell you right away that they think that you need to create new campaigns every single time we need to change the bid cap. This is crazy. We're basically telling Facebook reset and reset and reset and reset. What we wanna be telling Facebook is get out of the learning phase, abide by the bid cap that we set, and then we'll coast from there. Here's what we're gonna do. We need to set our columns correctly. So I'm going to go into customize our columns and let's just get rid of everything. I'm going to tell you the most important columns that I would like to basically set up. So first things first is that bid strategy. I'm going to set our attribution setting. Then we're going to get amount spent. We're then going to go to purchases and we're going to get total purchases, value, cost, and total ROAS. And I'm going to unselect all of these because I just want to see the meta value and see if there's also anything coming from the shop. Okay. So once we do that, we'll replace our existing column set right away. Super easy easy to see. They have no Facebook or Instagram shop in place. Home run for us. That's a 20 to 30% increase right off the bat. No doubt about it. And just because of that, I'm going to make my columns even cleaner and I'm actually going to remove meta purchases from each of these column sets. And I'm also going to add in CPMs, CPCs, CTRs, and then I want to also check frequencies so I can really just get a good understanding of what's the health of the account. From a health perspective, right away, we're at a $57 CPM. That scares me. That's a little too high. However, we do see see some CPMs are substantially cheaper. I would think this is a creative thing. However, there's so much breakage here. CPCs are very efficient. 75 cents is fine. Click-through rates are killer. 7% link click-through rates. I am in a happy spot because that means that their creative is good. So we take a look at the most highest spending bid cap campaign. And it looks like we have a bid cap of $75.77. I'm not really sure why so specific. And as we move down the ladder, it looks like we have the same bid cap again. And continuing to move down the ladder, we have a bunch of different bid caps between $50 and $55. So they're trying to find their bid cap here. I'm going to simplify this for everyone. If you don't know how to set your bid caps, which in this case, they do not know how to set their bid caps, set a cost cap instead. You could literally upgrade any bid cap campaign to a cost cap by literally just clicking on this campaign bid strategy, clicking edit and changing it to a cost per result goal. Once you do that, you just need to set what your average cost cost per acquisition needs to be. It's not the worst thing to set a cost cap. A bid cap is a little bit more prescriptive. It might get you slightly better results, but I could almost guarantee that anyone that's managing it at this level and trying to be too particular with it. And if you're not sure what your bid cap exactly needs to be, you should not be using bid caps because bid caps are very particular. If you miss on your bid caps, you're either going to lose a lot of money or not spend any money at all. So we need to set up our bid caps in a very, very clear way related to the margin of the product and how much the customer or the client is willing to pay for a new acquisition. In this setup, this is an easy forget bid cap situation because if they forgot bid caps, they would have 13 less campaigns in their account. And instead of having all this breakage of purchases, we'd have 210 purchases associated to one campaign. We would be out of the learning with all of our ad sets. We'd be able to test creatives. We would be able to test literally every aspect of Facebook that you cannot test because you're so concerned with the bid cap. Furthermore, when we look into these, we have the same audiences again and again and again. And when we actually look into the settings of the ad set, I see fine conversion settings here. Don't like ad set budget spending minimums. That ruins the point of bid caps. You should not have these set up if you have bid caps at all. And then we are targeting ages 30 to 65, which is fine, but I would argue that there's no point in that. Gender is fine. And then, oh my goodness, we have manual placements. Manual placements are just never going to work better than and advantage plus placements, especially when we're only literally excluding Instagram explore home. That is the last placement I would think to exclude and Instagram search results for some reason. These are minuscule amounts of your spend to not allow Facebook to figure out where to maximize your budget. Here's what I would do instead. We are going to have a conversation with this brand and I'm going to tell them literally exactly this. First off, gut everything, take your best creatives and put them into an advantage plus campaign. That's step one. Step two, create a new product 
prospecting campaign and make that prospecting campaign a combination of interest. They're spending $10,000. Assuming they stay at $10,000, we're going to have one interest and one broad ad set. Every time we get new creatives, we are launching them as a new broad ad set within that prospecting campaign. The third thing we're going to do is we're going to run retention. We want to actually figure out a way where we can hit existing customers to have them come back and purchase over and over and over again. It's going to be a small amount of our budget. I would guess somewhere around 500 bucks for the whole month. What we need to monitor frequently is A, our return on ad spend. And then I also really just want to look at frequency and understand, are we hitting the same people over and over? Are we hitting new people? And then finally, from a creative perspective, I'm looking at click-through rate. These click-through rates are absolutely awesome. 7.6%. It's a home run creative click-through rate to product. Now, all we need to do is refine the strategy. This is again, one of those scenarios that I think we bring this ROAS from a 1.86 easily to a 2.5, essentially within a few weeks. But that change from 1.86 to 2.5 with a better structure should be pretty easy here. Love to see an account like this. I feel sorry for them right now, but I hope we get the opportunity to make this a thousand times better. If you want to work directly with us, hit us up at the moonlighters.co. We'll do this exact same thing for your brand. If you're spending over $30,000 in ad spend right now, we have absolute hands-on white glove service available for you. If you're under $30,000, we will work together to get you to scale up to that next level. If you got value from this video, let me know in the comments below. It helps a lot and we will talk in the next one. Thank you.